How's it going? So I've been working in collaboration with Meadow Arts and we've put together a, an exhibition called Skin Deep, which is on show at a National Trust property called Barrington Hall inside Herefordshire. Um, it's an old Georgian property, one of Capability Brown's uh, final projects. And so actually this idea of uh, an artificial natural works really well with uh, the drawings of mine that we've interspersed throughout the uh, throughout the collection and throughout the beautiful Georgian interior. Unfortunately, as is everybody, it's on lockdown uh, at the minute, so we thought it'd be quite a nice idea to put together a bit of a recorded uh, interview, uh, talking a little bit about my work and uh, where I make it and how I make it, and also answering some of the questions you've been sending in through social media. Uh, so I think we better get on with it, hey? Thematically, the work is about uh, flesh and skin and faces uh, and how it presides within you know industry uh, advertising um, social media you know because we are absolutely saturated by images of, of skin uh, and you know we, we digest them for all of point nothing less second you're consuming them at a rate of knots and I'm questioning whether we actually take a moment to even comprehend what it is that we're, we're being presented. Um, so I, I'm really trying to re-advertise how we, um, you know, a basic version, a basic vision of, of skin. Um, you know, we, all these routines that we're flaunted, um, putting cream on our faces, you know, they're, they're all very normal things that we, we just get on with. Uh, but when you when you isolate them in an uh, in a art gallery setting, you know they become really quite abstract. You know we understand the narrative of uh, cucumbers on your eyes makes your eyes all nice and and, and glistening. Um, when you put it in an art gallery setting, why on earth are we putting cucumbers on our eyes? You know it really becomes quite obscure. Um, and so now it's started to look at social media, and you know how we're supposed to present ourselves to make us a socially accepted and b what we also have to do in order to make ourselves heard you know um, body modification procedures are becoming that much more extreme to make you know an, an individuality because you know what is individuality these days it's, it's so diverse that being individual is the norm <laughs> so so you know these these procedures are becoming that much more extreme to try and make yourself stand out from the crowd Yeah, the, the scale of the work is quite important. Um, you know, all the time I'm trying to replicate these um, tools that the ad advertising industry use. So scale is one of them. Uh, it's another reason I use Perspex to encase the works because, you know, it mirrors advertising placards. Um, but, yeah, people don't really uh, appreciate in, in replication the scale of some of these works because, uh, well, these, these are quite early ones. Um, so... This is a big stack of them just here. So, you know, they're, they're really quite, quite large. Um, and actually, one of, the, one of the biggest pieces I've made is in this show at Barrington Hall. So that's uh, divine, it's 5.4 meters uh, by 2.7, so it's a whacker. Um, and all the time, you know, using it uh, to strengthen that idea of re-advertising so I work at my studios in Shropshire. Um, I purpose-built studios here where we live uh, because we moved out of Birmingham not so long ago. Uh, where I was working for about 10 years uh, at some beautiful studios uh, in Digworth. Uh, it was an old factory floor um, that produced records. And uh, I mean, I was there from the very beginning when it was single paned single paint windows that were largely smashed and leaky roofs, which is definitely not great when you work on paper. Um, you know, the, the winters were so blooming chilly, you'd have to shove hot water bottles down your jumper and turn your kettle on to defrost it. Um, but it made you feel real, you know. Um, we'd, over the time, made it grandiose. And uh, actually, uh, it is now A3 Project Space and Studios, which I helped set up whilst I was there. But um, we then moved out of Birmingham. So I, uh, I made this uh, where we live and um, I mean, it's uh, it's filling up far too quickly <laughs> when you when you make works 
as big as some of the ones that I've made. Uh, space is a bit of a premium, but uh, no, here it is. I work mainly in, um, in pastels on paper, uh, soft hand rolled pastel. Uh, mainly actually with Unison uh, pastels. I've been working quite uh, closely with those. And in fact, um, I'll show you this right now. Um, here they are down here. A, a set of uh, my very own Ollie Jones pastels that we've been putting together. Uh, and actually some of the, those are the bigger, beginner ones. These ones are the, these are the juicy ones. Check those out. So actually they're a color selection that I've been putting together uh, in collaboration with them. They're great pastels, really nice and soft, give, out, give up an awful lot of pigment. Uh, I've been working with them for, for quite some time. Uh, so the, the main reason I use pastel uh, is through its very nature and the nature of the paper. Um, it creates a very delicate and fragile surface which is directly comparable to actual flesh. Um, but also, uh, the way that I actually apply the pastel and start to, to render the, the work, um, in, the, in the earlier stages, you know, being quite broad with my gestures um, and then building up to something that's really quite intricate in, uh, in, in the fragile, delicate areas, um, is, is really comparable to the way that we would apply um, a beauty product uh, or makeup uh, to to the actual flesh, so I find it really strengthens the 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 context of the work uh, because I'm trying to re-advertise flesh, so it needs to have that sort of narrative about it. Um, but I really very much wish I was a little bit more organised uh, with 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 my pastels because I just end up with absolute dust. I don't know if you can see this, the, my my workstations end up looking like this. I have boxes and boxes of pastels that just end up looking like this greyish mud. I have plenty of people uh, telling me they can't believe that I can work like that, and I I wish I was just a little bit more organised. Um, but uh, in fact, I do some uh, teaching of mature students in um, in the Westin College in Sussex, and uh, invariably, folk will turn up with massive boxes of beautiful pastels that they've had for years and years and years and then when I come over to their to, to, to their station to try and uh, show them the way that I do it I will snap these beautiful pastels in half because I it just that's what I do just automatically come and snap them so I'm using tiny little pieces of it and you can see the blood rush out of their face when I do that but it's, uh, it's just comes as second nature as soon as I get a pastel out of paper I snap it um, and so you know I, I I've seen loads, loads of uh, pastel artists with their beautiful trays of, you know, uh, indexed pastels, but it's just not the way I can work. Um, and, and actually, a, a point on that is that now that um, art shops seem to be disappearing in favour of uh, online, it, it's a real shame because, I mean, the way I used to pick them was... It used to be like a sweet shop, you know. I'd have to take the image in from that I was, I was working from um, and, and literally uh, pick and choose a, a, a set every single time that I started a new image. Now it's so much more difficult with that barrier between the screen and what you're actually getting. So it's such a good job that I work with Unison now because you know I, I have they've made me a little bit more organised in in the pastels that I know that I that I the know that I know that I use. Uh, but no, it's 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 quite funny. I, I really I really should sort that out. So this is what I work on. Uh, I've, thankfully, just before the lockdown, I managed to get loads of materials. Uh, so I've managed to work pretty unfaulted through it. There's some materials I can't get hold of. So basically, th this is a canvas. This is, um, I, I work on a hard stretcher. Um, so I make, I make all my frames and then basically stretch the paper over it. Um, and I find it's a really great, um, uh, surface to work on and, and like I say I I've, I I've rarely include backgrounds uh, in my work because one I really enjoy the the texture uh, and the surface of the paper um, but also I haven't really got anything to say about the backgrounds you know um, this is similarly you know I, I use perspex to frame them like like this one uh, because it's very minimal you know it doesn't um, inflict itself on on the on the piece itself um, 
so so that's why I very uh, more often than not keep the surface of the paper um, evident uh, so yeah Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the further down the line I go, you know, the more I'm trying to interrogate my practice and my working methods. Uh, I mean, it is becoming more important to me now. Um, in earlier work, it wasn't so much. I was more concerned about trying to get the image uh, together, you know, com more comparable to the way a, a photorealist would, would paint. Um, but, you know, I, I, I get less enjoyment from that than the way I can, you know, when, when I'm, I'm being very gestural. I mean, the, 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 work, I, the work I enjoy looking at is, is abstract, is abstract art, um, abstract paintings, um, you know, very gestural, uh, energetic works. And, and that is what my work is like. Um, it's, it's very hard to convey that to people when you have an outcome that is, 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 seems quite tight. But, you know, as you're working through it, 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 it is very gestural and so I'm starting to make work that is a little bit you know m more removed from the, the more refined um, resolve that kind of I'm used to used to doing uh, in fact one of the pieces of work in this exhibition um, which I've called uh, landscape in pink one uh, it, it, it's a, a very zoomed in uh, image of skin uh, and it is, it is, it has got that kind of quality about it that it could be kind of photorealistic. But I'm, I'm kind of playing with those two grounds of, of um, something that's a lot more abstract. Uh, again, it's just the way I enjoy using the pastel that I that I've started to play with a lot more. Um, and so, yeah, in this in this respect, I am becoming more attuned to the way that I'm mark making. Uh, I think it's a natural progression of how I'm starting to. Um, see how these methods are adapting uh, so at the minute I'm well I might well I'll show you some that's just here uh, let me take that out so these are these are two recent ones let me get that out of the way as well <laughs> so this is one of them and here's another hopefully you can see that I don't know it's in its perspex so it might be a little bit shiny um, basically, when I when I start a piece of work, uh, everything's you know reactive. Um, it's exciting because I'm not quite sure. It's vaguely unpredictable because I'm not quite sure about the rhythm that I'm going to be using to get through the image. I'm not quite sure how uh, the the colours going to react um, together, and so I find that quite exciting. It's a lot of problem solving, and and when when I've found you know that that uh, process um, it, it becomes you know a lot almost a lot easier but it also becomes predictable and so then by the time I've got to the end of the work um, I can be a little bit despondent with them because um, because of the, the predictability of them uh, and also because I've been spending such a long time actually interrogating the image I, I, I think I can probably get a little bit bored of seeing them. So it, it takes a long time of not having seen the work for, for a while to, to re-engage with it and fall back in love with it. Um, so with these works, I thought I'd actually just stay in that zone, you know, um, and, and try, only take them as far as they, they, they required, really. I, I'm not really sure when that will start and, and, and stop. You know, I, I work through them until, you know, I've got that excitement of making them. And as soon as I feel that's you know, I found my way through it, I kind of leave them there, which is quite, it's quite nice, it's quite therapeutic for me to just only work, make work that I've loved to make. Um, but I think they've, I think they benefit, benefited from it, really. I, I quite like the way they, you know, uh, quite organically grow. I'm not quite sure where the, 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 the start and the, the stop is. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a piece over here, I'll quickly just show you this. Um, so this was, here, this piece up here in this frame, and this one down here, and this here. This is um, this was the working drawing for for the work, and this is how it was supposed to have turned out. But uh, in the first instance, I did this piece, um, and 
there was a technical issue with how I was making it. The, 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 the pastel um, does a certain thing. Uh, it, kind of, it kind of coagulates um, in areas. And I, I, know when, I know when it will happen, um, in, but I'm not quite sure how it happens. <laughs> so, so basically I, I took it to this point where I, I, th I thought I could save it. And then, um, but th this, uh, this, this thing happened. And I, if people, if, if, I had, if I didn't tell people about it, they wouldn't know, but it's, it's something that I would recognize in it. And, and so uh, I find it vaguely unacceptable. So, so basically I had to, I, I cropped this image to take out all the, the bits that were, um, were coagulating. And um, so it kind of, it push. I, I like the, the the fact that it's different uh, and isn't quite what I set out to do. But that whole point is, it wasn't what I set out to do. So I felt compelled to do it the way that I first intended it. Um, but then that meant that by the end of it, I was. I, it was a struggle to get to the end of that piece. Um, I just don't see the point in redoing work. I, I really think you should refocus energy elsewhere. You know, I, I could have, I could have done another two pieces in the time it took me to get through that. You know, um, and and so now for me that that one just represents that kind of struggle. Um, I mean, I like it. There's parts about it that I do like, and it, it definitely benefited from doing it again because there's parts like in the shadows here. Um, I definitely did them better the second time round, but uh, now I got to the end of how it was meant to be. I, I guess the it, it just represents, that, like I say, that struggle of um, you know the process that was no longer the exciting thing that I set out to do in the first place. So, uh, so basically, I've, I've I've decided to stay in the zone a bit brief as that might have been I, I don't want to waffle on for too much longer um, so if you'd like to see any of the works in the flesh then try and get to the the skin deep exhibition at Barrington Hall um, details of when that might reopen will probably be on the the um, Meadow Arts website uh, if you'd like to see any of the works um, in progress then follow the studio Instagram account other than that rave safe